EC201 lecture 7. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at negative feedback and we realized the following that in general you can represent a negative feedback system by a block diagram in this fashion. For simplicity we consider only electrical networks and to make it even more simple we consider only linear electrical networks where all the blocks are, are linear. Hmm? So we saw yesterday that V out by V ref which is called the closed loop gain is given by 1 over f times AF by 1 plus AF where AF is called the loop gain. What are the salient points to take away from uh, yesterday's lecture? The closed loop gain depends only on what? Only on the feedback network if the loop gain is much, much, much larger than 1. This brings up an interesting business opportunity which is, come on, I am serious. It does bring up a business opportunity. What is the opportunity? Okay, as a businessman, I would say, look at this. If I built a block, which, I mean, you know that you can make money only when you sell millions and millions and millions of parts, correct? Okay. Or rather, if you sell millions and millions of parts, you will make, the hope is that you will make billions and billions of bucks. So, there is a business case for something that can be sold in large numbers. For like example, a cell phone or, you know, uh, things like that. Hmm? And presumably, uh, a lot of applications will use feedback because feedback enables you to get a closed loop input to output response which only depends on the feedback network or the feedback path F. So, if I made a block which could do, uh, I understand that negative feedback basically means I need a forward amplifier with a very, very large gain. Thankfully, the gain doesn't have to be precise as long as the gain is large enough. Okay? And I need some method of subtracting the, uh, the uh, feedback quantity which is a voltage in this case and the input quantity which is also a voltage. So, in other words, if I make a black box which subtracts two voltages, and if you look at the stuff in in the green, uh, you know, whatever, oval here, you see that, what is it doing? What is the functionality of that green box? <laughs> it is taking the difference between two voltages and amplifying it by some very, very, very large number. Now, if you just sold this as a building block, then you know, they, I mean, uh, a person X might want to build like an amplifier of gain 2.43. Some other person might want to build an amplifier with a gain of 6.2. A third person might want to build a gain with uh, an amplifier with a gain 10.7. Uh, if you now had to sell all these amplifiers separately, it would be a major pain because you have to go and find the... All the people are obviously not going to use the same gain. Okay, so there are different people, have different applications. So, the gain required will be different in every case. So now, you do not have to be bothered by you know, what gains people want. What you can say is, look, here is a generic building block. If you want a gain of 5, uh, or go find an appropriate feedback block such that the closed loop gain is what you want. You understand? I will give you this forward path as is. And depending on what feedback path you put, the input to output gain will be 1 over 1 over f. The, what you want is an animal which does 
this, which takes the difference between two voltages. So V1, V2, V out. Okay? So V out must be A times V1 minus V2. And A must tend to infinity. And we know why A must tend to infinity because if A tends to infinity then the loop gain which is A times F becomes 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 infinity which which basically means that the the transfer function of the closed loop system becomes independent of A itself. And this is precisely how people thought and the first op amps I think came about sometime in uh, the late 50s I think. Okay. So if you wanted a gain of, uh, I mean now that you know this, if you wanted a gain of say 2, what would you do? Let's try and synthesize a circuit that would give us a voltage gain of 2. What should we do? So example, an amplifier with a gain 2. How would I realize this? Look at the block diagram. So if I want V out by, let us, since we are now dealing with an amplifier, let us call this V in. If we want V out by V in to be equal to 2, what should F be? F must be 1 half. Okay? In other words, the output of this block must be 1 half the input of this block, which is the input to the feedback block is the output. Alright, is the out. So, can somebody give me a suggestion as to uh, how I might be able to uh, realize the block with a gain of half? In other words, one simple way of doing it is to have a resistor R, another resistor R, so that this voltage becomes V out by and this is what? This is nothing but the op amp. We already have a block which takes two voltages, the difference between two voltages and puts a, a voltage which is many, many, many times the difference between the two voltages. So, this is the op amp. The op amp is supposed to take the difference between V out by 2 which is F times V out and and V in. So, so which must be plus on the op amp and which must be minus? This must be plus, this must be minus. If you had a high gain amplifier in a negative feedback loop, as the gain of the amplifier tends to infinity, what can one say about Okay, about this quantity here, if A becomes infinity, the error which is V ref minus F V out becomes zero. What is the corresponding quantity? When, okay. So when uh, so realizing the fact that the op amp is nothing but an implementation of that. Subtraction and the gain. Okay, we know that if the op amp is now in a negative feedback loop, then the difference between the two input terminals is zero. You understand? And how do you know if the op amp is in a negative feedback loop? So let's say I I, I showed you this circuit here, and I say no, the op amp is not in a negative feedback loop. How will you refute that argument? Pardon? So, whenever you have an, uh, a loop and you want to figure, here this is a trivial example because we have synthesized the circuit, okay? Many cases, you know, uh, you have a circuit and then uh, you want to figure out whether it's positive or negative feedback. So, what would you do? The sure shot way of figuring it out is break the loop at some place, then break the loop, yank one side of the loop up. So, if this goes up, what happens to this? 
What happens to uh, this guy? Goes up. Okay. If this goes up, what happens to uh, this chap? It goes down. Why? Because this input is connected to the minus terminal of the op amp. The minus terminal, the negative terminal of the op amp is also called the inverting terminal. Okay? By the same token, the positive sign of the op amp is called the non inverting term. Does that make sense? Okay? So now you understand why that rule makes sense. In your earlier classes, you have done, I mean, when you see an op amp in a network, you just go and blindly put V1 equal to V2. So now you know why that makes sense and when that makes sense. When does that make sense? Only when the op amp is in a the gain is infinity, alright, and when the most important thing is that the op amp must be in a negative feedback. As far as you are concerned, the op amp is an ideal voltage controlled voltage source, a very, very, very large gain. And what are the attributes of a voltage controlled voltage source? When you have a voltage controlled voltage source, what is the input impedance of a voltage controlled voltage source? How many of you have heard of uh, something called a voltage controlled voltage source? Okay, well, that's good. Okay, so when you have a voltage control voltage source, it's a two port of this form. Okay, so the output V out is some A times V in. Okay, so what do you understand when I say the input impedance of an ideal voltage control voltage source? I mean, that's the impedance looking in. Here and for an ideal VCVS, what would be that impedance? It must be infinite. What is the output impedance of a voltage control voltage source? The output impedance must be zero. Is that clear or it's not clear? Now let's look at the input impedance of a voltage control voltage source. When you have a controlled source which is dependent on voltage, what do you think uh, its input impedance must be? It should be infinity. Is this clear or, uh, you know, if you want to sense some voltage, you must make sure that you must not go and perturb the voltage that you are sensing. In other words, you must not draw any current from whatever voltage you are measuring. And that's the reason why the impedance of a voltmeter must be, be infinity. Is that clear? What is the input impedance of an ideal voltage control voltage source? Infinity. What is output impedance? Zero. Okay. What about a voltage controlled current source? The input impedance must be infinity. The output impedance must be infinity. Alright. The current controlled voltage source? The uh, input impedance must be? It's a current controlled source, so it's like saying that there's a guy there putting an ammeter in series with the branch and producing a voltage which is some R times the current he reads in the ammeter. And the input resistance of an ideal ammeter is zero. So this must be zero. What about the output impedance? Zero. It's a voltage source, so it's zero. And the, of course the final thing is the CCCS. And what is that? Input impedance must be zero, output impedance must be infinite. Does this make sense? Okay. So, as far as you are concerned, the operational amplifier at this point, an ideal voltage controlled voltage source, so VA, VB, okay, and it is a special kind of voltage controlled voltage source, okay, in that one terminal is grounded. Okay, so this output voltage V out is A times V A minus V B, where A is a very, very large number. Finally, op amps are also built using transistors. So when we get there, you will understand why one of the terminals has to be grounded. But for the time being, you can just treat it as a 
special voltage controlled voltage source where one of the i mean if you look at a general voltage controlled voltage source both the terminals are output terminals are available to you okay in an op amp it turns out because of the way it is designed inside that one terminal is is grounded okay and uh, the output voltage is a times va minus vb and if this if a tends to infinity and this op amp is embedded inside a negative feedback loop what are the rules you have to use va is equal to vb okay and i mean this is an open circuit so voltage control voltage source so no current can go inside hmm? that is how the rules come into being the important thing to note is again i will stress this is only you can't go and blindly apply this rule every time you see an op amp you can only apply it once you ascertain without any uncertainty that it is indeed sitting inside a negative feedback let's do couple of exercises on uh, examples on ascertaining whether this is true or not take a look at this circuit so can you tell me what the signs on the op amp must be for negative feedback operation this guy here it's a voltage control voltage source okay with a gain of minus 5 negative yeah one has to be negative one has to be positive below one is positive positive or negative positive 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 why what do we do what are we supposed let's uh, let's figure out the answer what are we how are we, how are we going to figure the answer out you first have to break the loop okay so uh, the, i mean you can clearly see that there's a negative there's a, there's a feedback loop like this because v1 causes some disturbance here which causes some disturbance here which goes through the op amp so let's break the loop at some convenient location let me not always break the uh, loop at you know at the output of the op amp i'll break it here at this point this time hmm? this is just to show you that you know there's no black magic involved and it's all quite straight forward i break the loop i yank this up what happens to this node why does it go up there is no current please note that this current is zero i equal to zero so if this goes up this is nothing but a string of resistor so this potential will also go up if and let's assume some arbitrary signs for the op amp okay so if i assume that this was these were the signs if this goes up this goes up if the negative the inverting terminal of the op amp goes up what happens to the output of the op amp it goes down if this goes if v1 goes down what happens to minus 5 v1 goes up okay so for the chosen sign of the op amp is this negative feedback or positive feedback positive feedback so what should i do for negative feedback operation i flip the signs okay so these are the signs on the op amp let's uh, you know sit down and get a little bit of intuition on this amplifier you've seen this amplifier already okay can uh, now somebody quickly tell me what is v out by vn in this uh, in this design what is v out by vn 3 yes why is it 3 how did you figure it out i mean uh, one way of doing it is to use the rule which is the op amp is now in a negative feedback loop which means that the two terminals must, must be at the same potential so if this is vn this is also called this is also vn if this is that there is vn then the current here must be vn by now we solve it as loss okay if this is vn by r the current here is zero so all the current must flow must be coming from here you understand so this must be the and the same current must be coming from here the current is basically vn by r so the voltage v out must be this is vn the drop across this resistor is vn the drop across this resistor is also vn okay so the total voltage at the output is 3 vn 
let's say you had some arbitrary network okay so you have an op amp like this something comes out here the only thing i can say is that and the op amp is in a negative feedback loop which you can ascertain how how can you ascertain that the op amp is in a negative feedback loop i break the loop go through this uh, you know this complicated network and come back and you know i'll be able to figure out what i must choose for the signs of the op amp to ensure negative feedback operation hmm if i i'm sure about that then i can be sure that the potential here is v n does it make sense okay so the arbitrary network may not be just resistors it could have op amps inside also so for every op amp if you ascertain that it's in a negative feedback loop then you can simply use the two rules which you have learned which is the input currents into the terminals of an op amp are zero and the voltage difference between the two terminals of an op amp are also zero then you write kirchhoff's equations and you know so so it's very straightforward okay so let's get some intuition on how feedback is working here i mean amplify with a gain of 2 that we've been seeing this is v in this is v out so what is the op amp's job in this whole scheme of things the op amp is basically comparing is comparing v in with v out by 2 all right and if v out by 2 is smaller than v in it is going and kicking the node v out pushing it up because if v out by 2 this is v out by 2 okay if v out by 2 is smaller than v in then there will be a positive voltage between the terminals of the op amp which will and since the gain of the op amp is infinity it will go and kick this node v out very hard it will it it's trying to push the potential of v out so it's like uh, you know uh, a tough policeman making sure that everybody complies with the law i mean the moment v out for some reason if it tries to drop down the correction i mean the, the op amp will go and kick v out so bad that v out comes back to v out by 2 becomes equal to v in in other words v out becomes twice v it is very important in a negative feedback loop to have this this big brother in the forward path with uh, you know infinite gain okay but it, to ensure that the closed loop system has the properties that you want it is extremely important that the feedback network be be nice and clean if this resistor was r1 and this resistor was r2 what is v out it comes to the uh, op amp is basically comparing v in with v out times r1 by r1 plus r2 okay and which means that the gain the closed loop gain is 1 plus r2 by r1 when I mean, you're all familiar with the circuit isn't it you must have done this uh, many times over okay so if i wanted to get a gain of 1 for example what all can i do how can i get a gain of 1 with this i mean this is just this is just a special case to get gain equal to 1 how many ways are there of getting gain equal to 1 you can make r2 equal to 0 or r1 equal to infinity or r2 equal to 0 and r1 equal to infinity which will result in what circuit if i make r2 equal to 0 i mean earlier there was r2 here which i made 0 there was r1 here to ground which i made infinity this is an example of an amplifier is a special case of that amplifier where v out equals v in and that's i mean if i gave you the circuit it's very straightforward for you to see that that is indeed the case because there is certainly negative feedback and the two terminals of the op amp must have the we have the same potential so if this is v in this must also be v in which also happens to be v out okay so this is sometimes called the 
what? Voltage follower. Okay. Why is it called the voltage follower? Why does the name make sense? The output follows the input. Huh? Let's say you are you have with you an ideal op amp. You want a current controlled voltage source. In other words, if I have an input current I in, I want an output voltage which is R times I. So let's think, what can we do to get make this happen? If you were in the lab, okay, I gave you, you know, and I'm, I mean, if I, I, I'm going to give you an input current, and I want you to generate a voltage which is some R times which is 1K, let's say, 1K times the input current I give you. What will you do? Okay. Okay, so one argument is the following, which is, uh, you take the current I in, alright, and just pass it through a resistor. Alright, so solution 1. Let's see what the problems with the solution are and you know, we'll try and if there's no problem then we're through. If there's a problem then we'll go and fix it. And when you want to have a current controlled voltage source, what should be the output impedance of the voltage source? It must be 0. So, we want a CCBS, which means that Z in must be how much? Ideal CCBS, 0 and Z out must be 0. Okay. So, what do we have here? Yes, people. What is Z in here? This is the black, I mean I want a black box which takes in a current and gives out a voltage. Okay. And I want V out to be equal to R times I in. And what I am claiming is that my black box is this. That's what this putting a resistor means. So what is the input impedance? Z in is, come on people, R, Z out is, R. So, what is the conclusion? Is this a good solution or not? Uh, this is a bad solution because the moment you put, you, you are hoping to get a voltage source, okay? And what are the attributes of a voltage source? I should be able to load it with any resistance and the voltage shouldn't change. Now here, in this solution, if I load this port with a resistor, the output voltage changes immediately because the input current, part of it only flows through R, some of it flows through the load. So that's no good. Okay, so what do we do to fix it? Imagine you are in the lab. What would you do? What would you want from me? Pardon? Okay, so uh, one thing that uh, solution 2 one fix that my friend here suggests is the following, which is, okay, so you have a problem with uh, output impedance, let me try this. We just saw that you can make a you have with you an op amp which is basically an, a voltage controlled voltage source. So, this is my new box. I in. Okay. So, what is Z in now? R. What about Z out? Z out is 0. Okay. So, this is certainly a better solution than the first one. The output impedance is 0, but the input impedance is not 0. So, the question now is, is it possible to get, do something where the input impedance is also 0 and the output impedance is also 0. 
That well, uh, I don't know how to make uh, the uh, R zero, the input impedance zero, but I can definitely do the following, which is I make this R by n, where n is a large number, okay, and then follow it up by an amplifier of gain n, because I already know what to do, right? So if this is R and this is n minus one times R, then the input impedance becomes R by n and the gain becomes the gain of the op amp itself uh, this amplifier is n ok so I will get input to output b the input the ratio of the output uh, voltage to the input current becomes equal to R and uh, his claim is that I will choose R to be sufficiently large I mean n to be sufficiently large which is which is alright but you see that you know, finally n has to be finite, okay? You, you cannot make n tend to infinity because if n tends to infinity, uh, what is the problem? Yeah, so if n tends to infinity, okay, then it's like basically, I mean, what, what happens, what is the feedback f factor here? In terms of n, what is it? 1 by n, okay? So as n becomes larger and larger and larger, okay, f becomes tends to 0, but what did we say, the loop gain is A times F and the gain is N only when AF tends to infinity. But if A tends to infinity and F tends to 0, the product will certainly not tend to infinity. So that's clearly, I mean while this is a solution which can, so N can be made somewhat, a reasonably large number, but cannot tend to infinity. So the question is what do we do, how do we figure out, okay, so we will take a look at.